Great, many thanks here. Um, I'll be talking about HIPAA 2015 and how we use D-Groups. So as Pierre explained earlier, in addition to being chair of the D-Groups Foundation, we also use D-Groups as a, an affiliate, and I'll explain that in a moment, on the D-Groups Foundation. Uh, here you'll see our website, hiffa2015.org, and the um, email uh, platform, which is dgroups.org forward slash hiffa2015. Um, so we've got the, the, the way it's set up is that uh, you have separate web, we have a separate website for explaining everything that we do, and a, a website web page that is part of the dgroups page for the communication. Now, the outline doesn't look as quite as complicated as it, it, as it appears. It's just 15 slides that I've got here. I'll be looking at why we chose dgroups, how we add value to the discussions, how we use the discussions, and then I'll finish with a question for all of us to discuss, which is basically how can we, as in all health and development forums, collaborate with each other better. First, I want to say why we chose dgroups as our platform. Well, we wanted to use email, and dgroups focuses on the email experience. Email is more, it's, it's more inclusive, it's more accessible. Um, anything, that is, anything that requires web-based interface is bound to exclude people um, by necessity. We also want to be able to add value to every message, and dgroups has a unique functionality which allows us to do this, and I'll show you that too. Um, by the way, everything that I'm saying in this presentation would apply to the Knowledge Gateway because the Knowledge Gateway uses the same software. We also chose dgroups because we wanted to collaborate with other organizations, and the dgroups Foundation has 18 development partners, including DFID and many others. And we want personal, high-quality technical support in a non-commercial environment. And again, I'll say hats, hats off to Damir Sinanik and WA Research for providing excellent technical support. Now, I mentioned about affiliation. We, HIFA, are actually affiliated with INASP, which is one of the main D-Group's partners. There are 18 partners, each of whom pay 4,000 euros per year. Um, but organizations that have less than 500,000 euros annual turnover can affiliate with the full partners to allow them to have a group. So what do we want to achieve with HIFA 2015? The rationale is laid out in a Lancet article by Fiona Godley, myself and others. But our vision is a world where every health worker and every citizen has access to the information they need when they need it to prevent and manage disease and injury. So HIPAA is a community of purpose. It's not only a community of practice, it's, but it is what I would describe as a community of purpose, which is that the members, when they first came together, defined their common vision, uh, which we published as a foundation document, and we're all working together towards that vision. Now, this is the strategy for achieving our vision. I'm not going to go through it in detail um, because you can see it on the web and it's described in detail on the web about how this all fits together. But, there, but I just wanted to show you this to show that there is a logic to what we're doing as part of a broader strategy. So you see the HIFA forums on the bottom left there. Um, the HIFA forums and in other words, the D-groups, our, our work on D-groups, is only part of a much broader strategy, but it is the central and most important part. And so I'm, I'm putting this slide mainly to flag up to potential um, new projects, to so think about not just having a forum that hangs in, in mid-air, so to speak, but to embed it in your organization's strategy. We launched in, the, in Kenya in 2006 at the Association for Health Information and Libraries in Africa Congress, and we've grown to around 6,300 members since then, 
Next year we're coming back to Ahila, uh, this time to Tanzania, to review progress. As I mentioned, there's 6,300 members from over 2,000 organisations. Roughly half of our members are health professionals and the other half are a mix of information professionals, publishers, policy makers and researchers and others. One of the nice things that the dgroup software does is produce these maps for each dgroup. And this is the global map for the HIFA, 20, HIFA 2015 dgroup. So you can see that we've got a lot of members in the UK, um, America, also in Nigeria, India, Kenya, Uganda, South Africa, and sm slightly smaller numbers elsewhere. But, but we've got a good spread in 170 countries. This is the kind of spread that you might expect for an English-speaking list, which is what HIFA is. So how do we add value to these discussions? I actually wrote a, an article for the Knowledge Management for Development Journal about our approach that we've built up over many years, and we call it reader-focused moderation. And one of the aspects of reader-focused moderation is that we add, add value to every single message. Now, the dgroups software that we use, thanks to WA Research, allows us uniquely to do just this. It allows us, if necessary, to edit the subject line, to edit the from line, and to edit the body. Now, by editing the subject line, we can make sure that the line that is at the top of the message, which is what people will see first when they first go into their email inbox, actually reflects the content of the uh, message, and it also bears the number on, um, in the thread. The from line, we're also able to edit this allows us to change what might be a, a non-intelligible from line, which has come from the uh, sender's email client, to include the actual name and country where they're sending the message from. And the body, of the particular thing that we add as part of our reader focus moderation is a signature profile to the end of every message. So every single member who, has, who joins HIFA 2015 um, has a signature profile which is added to the end of any message that they may send. And that's actually done manually, but it only takes a few seconds to do. How do we use the discussions after, they have been, after they've happened? Well, in our experience, discussions have often not been used. Once they, once they tend to be ephemeral in, in many forums. Um, some, I know that some communities of practice have tried to, and, w and we have ourselves, tried to do summaries of threads and things like that. But in effect, that doesn't have a long shelf life in terms of interest to people. So what we've devised with help from WHO Library is a new approach which we call HIPAA Voices, whereby we select short verbatim extracts from HIPAA messages and then tag word it tag word those and add those to a searchable database. We already have a prototype functional knowledge base. It's not yet public, but it has 560 HIFA voices in it. And we know that within the archive there are several thousand more which are waiting to be processed. Now we're designing this so that the database will drill upwards, so to speak, to major databases such as the IntraHealth International Human Resources for Health Global Resource Center, and downward, so to speak, to the full text of the source message and the discussion thread from where it comes. And we can use these HIPAA voices for many different purposes. One example is given here that we used HIPAA voices, just a small number in the prototype that we had, to inform the development of a new WHO guideline on optimizing health worker roles to improve access to key maternal and newborn health interventions. And we have a, um, an acknowledgement here from Simon Lewin, who is on the WHO guideline development group, just to say how much potential the, this um, approach could have. 
And how do we engage non-English speakers? Well, this is critically important, uh, given that English is spoken only by about, I don't know, 20% perhaps of the, of the world, or less. Um, so we now have five different D groups in three different languages, which we run in collaboration with WHO and others. Um, we found that attempting to have two or three languages on, on a single forum doesn't really work well. And so we've ha what we have are parallel forums with bilingual moderators, which helps with cross-fertilization. We're funded by a number of organizations. Our main funder is the British Medical Association, which has awarded us 10,000 pounds, that's about 12 or 13,000 euros uh, this year, and has been doing so for six, ye six years uh, consecutively. And we also receive smaller amounts of money from all the other organizations that you see here. And the total that we income that we have for the HIFA forums is 25,000 euros per year, which is only enough to, to fund one full-time staff, myself. And I find that this is actually more, more than a full-time job with respect to develop, in order to roll out the whole strategy that I showed you earlier, we really need at least one, full, one new full-time staff or full-time staff equivalent. And I would like to flag up that we get a lot of help from lots of volunteers among the HIFA members. So there's HIFA country representatives, there are the people who are in, on the HIFA steering group and the various uh, HIFA working groups. How do, we, how do we evaluate what we do? Well, I won't go into this, but just to flag up that there are, what we've discovered through a major external evaluation in 2011, that there are two ways of looking at this. One is the formative evaluation, and the other is the impact evaluation. And we've learned what we did in 2011 with a very, very substantial grant of $50,000 from the Rockefeller Foundation is actually a lot more than our um, annual uh, turnover, operational turnover, which was spent on external evaluators. Uh, but they, they were nevertheless only really able to do a formative evaluation as opposed to an impact evaluation. The impact evaluation of knowledge networks is notoriously um, difficult. There's a web address there for details of the evaluation and the evaluation report. So I'll finish with a question for discussion for all of us. As I mentioned, how can we all work effectively with one another, as in all the many forums in global health? It seems to me that we're all doing our own thing, and more and more global health forums are popping up like mushrooms. Uh, but we are not, not, in my view, talking to each other as much as we could be. I really believe that we could um, do much more together than we can separately, which is one good reason why I, I'm so glad to see Angela um, and the joint meeting today. Uh, thanks, special thanks to, um, well, to everyone and to INASP for being our affiliate partner, D Group's partners and board here for doing a great job with communication support, Damir Simonik and WA Research for excellent work with the platform and all HIPAA members and volunteers. Thanks.